What's going on? It's Kevin Kenny here live in New York City for the Build Series. And our guest today has a brand new song out we're going to talk about called Leave Her Wild. Please give it up for Tyler Rich. How are you, man? Good. How are you doing? This is your first time on Build, which is always kind of exciting. This is. This is cool. Yeah, this is neat. We're live, so don't cuss. I won't. <laughs> but no. I'll try. <laughs> Welcome to our uh, humble abode here on uh, 4th and Broadway. Thanks. We were chatting. Uh, we just watched your video for The Difference here in the studio, and uh, we were chatting about you're from Northern California. Yeah. Which is, I guess it's not that uncommon anymore for a, a country star like yourself to come from somewhere that's not Nashville or these they're predominantly traditional country uh pipelines if you will mm -hmm. but uh, growing up in northern california were you listening to a lot of country music that always fascinates me yeah uh so where i grew up a lot of people have this misconception that california is disneyland and the beach in la and that's it uh yeah. california is a huge coast obviously and the entire state is agriculture farming um and i grew up in a tiny little town outside of sacramento and pretty much we listened to everything, of course, growing up, right. just kind of like everybody does. But uh, country was huge. Country was what I learned how to, you know, when I was first picking up a guitar and learning songs to sing along to with my uncle. And those were the songs we were learning. Right on. I know you, you're a big Blink-182 fan. You've talked about Eminem, Dr. Dre back in high school, right? What's like the first country artist that makes you fall in love with that style of music? Oh, it was, it was Garth Brooks, of course. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah, 100%. Who has sat in that very seat, not to make you right nervous. Here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, I thought it felt nice. Friend of the show. <laughs> Come back anytime now. Uh, but that, so why Garth? I mean, of course, just a superstar, but was there a song yeah. specifically? Um, like with what I said about my uncle, when we would, uh, any type of family situation, get together, barbecues, Christmas, we'd get together and my uncle would bring his guitar and a bunch of his friends and their guitars. And the songs they would sing would be, you know, like, Obviously, Friends in Low Places, of course. Um, the Dance, Thunder Rolls, um, That Summer, all those songs to me were just these amazing sing-along moments. And when I started learning what I wanted to play and what I wanted to write, it kind of had to emulate the songs that made me want to sing, which was that. And then if you flash forward a little bit into when I was in high school, because that was, that's like elementary school more when I started. Um, and when I'm full-blown in bands, I'm in high school, and I'm like, okay, what can I turn up loud in my garage to piss my neighbors off? Um, and that was stuff like Blink-182 and Sum 41 and Metallica and, God, anything, rap, yeah. hip-hop, playing guitar to anything I could that was loud, Nirvana, Foo Fighters, you know? And um, it wasn't until uh, artists like Tim McGraw and Keith Urban that kind of sucked me out of this teenage angst and brought me right back into simple, like, creative but effective songwriting of country music and i would argue brought you back to who you really are because I, I it's funny like i not to talk about myself but i, I recently converted a bunch of old vhs tapes to digital mm -hmm. and I, I i would have never guessed in my teenage years that i do what i do now for a living in terms of broadcasting and interviewing people like you but then you watch back your old tapes you're like oh my god this was kind of in me all along yeah. and you tell me that story that's how i feel whereas like again like you get caught up in the teenage angst of high school but really deep down you're a country music lover and then you rediscover that i think that's so cool yeah Absolutely. We find these videos of a, <laughs> we've got this video that just resurfaced online of, I was in this band that was just this pop rock, aggressive, fun, loud band. And we had our power go out one night at a show, which happens all the time more than you think. Power goes completely out. And the other guy in my band, Ryan, the other singer, he loved Garth Brooks, and so did I. And the other two guys didn't like country, but their stuff was turned off. And so <laughs> we started playing Friends in Low Places in the most Warp Tour-esque version you've ever heard for this crowd that then all of a sudden was like screaming, I got friends, like at the top of their lungs. And then all of a sudden power completely comes on. And then my drummer is like, and low, <laughs> like go so hard, and it turned into this big, huge moment, and I forgot about that. And you got to think that was God, 14 right. years ago, right? Yeah. That's and like uh, punk goes country. Absolutely. Remember those old compilations back in the day yeah, where you did punk covers? Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, but it always stemmed back to that, and I think it's just because, you know, the songwriting and all those songs is always so just God great. Oh yeah, totally. Um, it's it's hard to do a music interview anywhere now, especially here on Build, where we don't talk about genre and how genre has sort of, uh, in a way, never meant less, right, in terms of genre blending and, and taking from different sounds. But what I, what strikes me about, especially country, is, you know, they're flirting with pop, they're flirting with R&B influences, but it's still so distinct. You know a country song when you hear a country song. How would you define country music? <laughs> that is the question of the, uh, of the year, isn't it? Yeah. Um, honestly, right now, it's... 
it's what the country fans want to listen to. Uh, it sounds like it's an interesting answer, but realistically, it's if a country fan is listening to something and they love country and they're calling it country, then it's everything is kind of molding and blending into everything changes with time. And fans' taste of what they want to hear changes with time as well. And if a fan, a country fan a, with a country lifestyle can cre connect to a song that is country, then it technically is country. Right. It's the spirit of it, maybe. 100%. Yeah. Right. Uh, the sounds of everything is always going to change, um, but the heart behind it isn't. And if that fan or that radio station or that DJ connects to that song as a country song, then it's a country song. Why not, right? It was funny. So so much was made to do about the Billboard, you know, uh, taking the Lil Nas X off the charts or whatever. And I remember, like, that week we had Brooks and Dunn on the show. And I was like, hey, you think this is country? And they're, how long have they, those guys been doing it, right? Decades yeah. upon decades. And they were like, no, nah, this is country. We're down with this, you yeah. know? So it's funny. It is. Everything's going to change. The sounds will change. But it's really a spirit. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, he was singing about horses. And right. Old Town Road. Anything Old Town, that's country. Totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Billy Ray's got like, a great story, too. Like, he grew up near, like, an actual Old Town Road or something. And yeah. He just played gigs there. But uh, story for another day. Um, let's talk about how, if you don't mind, how you met your wife. And I'm sure this is a story you get asked about at every single place you go to. Mm -hmm. But I love it because it is, again, there's a throughway in all of these special moments of your life. And it's really country. It's a community of country. And Stagecoach is a huge country show. And this is where it all started, I hear. Yeah. Uh, we're getting married in three months. Yeah. So Congratulations, by the way. Thank Can you get a round of applause? Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, so that's creeping up. Um, we met at Stagecoach. I'm oh, sorry, I said wife. Yeah, yeah. I oh, that's fine. Everybody says wife. They're okay. just rushing me into this whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, we, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we met at Stagecoach. It was interesting because I saw her that first day on Friday, and I was just running around backstage, hanging out. I didn't have a record deal yet. I didn't have a song on the radio. I didn't have anything going on yeah. other than a lot. I thought I had a lot going on. I had the confidence of somebody that has a lot going on, which is what I needed that day. Um, but I didn't use it. I saw her and I let her walk away because I was like, oh, I'm not ready for this yet. I'm not going to say hi. I'll see her again. And then so then flash forward two days later, I finally see her again. And she's out in the pit and um, Dustin Lynch is performing. And I just got off tour with Dustin. And so I'm on the side stage. I'm watching him and stuff. And then I see her out in the pit. And I look at one of my best friends, Alex. I'm like, dude, there's that girl. We haven't seen her for two days. She didn't leave. She's here. We got to go now. I'm tired of looking at Dustin from this angle. <laughs> Let's watch from the crowd. Yeah. And so we run down there. And thank God we had had just an ungodly amount of Crown Royal that day. Um, and we had, a, <laughs> we had a bunch in our backpack, like a whole big bottle of confidence. And we went down. And the whole idea was let's stand right in front of these girls and have the best time that we possibly can so that all they want to do is hang out with us for the rest of the night. Like, it doesn't have to be romantic. Man, these guys look like the best hang. Why are we not friends with them? Um, and it worked, and now we're getting married. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. How many years ago is that? Three years. Three years ago. Yeah. And I just played stagecoach for the first time. Now, that's uh, got to be, that's, I mean, I know. you know, two months. But that's got to be special every year, right? Or every time you go back. Was this your first time back since then? No. So coming from California, that is, that's kind of like our hometown. It's super far from where I grew up, but it is the California Country Festival. Right. I mean, it's, it's like the final boss. It's this really big one. And so we go every year. Same group of friends. Is it almost like, I know it gets, I don't know, fairly or not, but like it gets called almost like the Country Coachella. Is yeah. it a similar vibe? Uh, well, because it is at the same place. Right. So it's kind of, it goes Coachella Weekend 1, Coachella Weekend 2, Stagecoach. Stagecoach. So it's like Stagecoach Coachella Weekend 3. Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's all the same people, different outfits. Right. People get houses. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. It's That's all cool. the same thing, just um, different, <laughs> yeah, more alcohol, less other stuff and, uh, <laughs> yeah. than they do at Coachella. Yeah. Um, and yeah, different Probably outfits. better for it. I would yeah, imagine. way better. Absolutely. Uh, let's talk about Leave Her Wild, the new song that is really, uh, I bring up the uh, Stagecoach story because it, it, there's a tie into, this is really inspired by your wife or your fiance. Mm -hmm. Getting ahead of you myself. can call her that. I got to get used to it anyway. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but tell me the story behind this. This is really a story about not wanting to change people, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I found, that, man, just one of like the craziest things that I realize is how common controlling relationships are and toxic relationships and how we can get so comfortable with somebody that we're afraid to stand up for things that we love because they might not like it. And there's so much sacrifice that goes into being with somebody. Um, and it's, it's about loving somebody for who they are and not sacrificing anything that you love to be with somebody. Uh, you should be with somebody that loves you for you, loves you, the person they met 
and not the vision that they have of who they'd like you to end up being. Right. Um, I was in a really, really controlling relationship in the past, um, and so was she. And so when Sabina and I first met and started dating a couple months later, um, I was in New York. I was here visiting. She used to live here, so visiting a lot of her friends. And her friend said, man, Tyler, thank you so much. You know, we finally have our friend back. And that hit. You know, I was like, wow, that's crazy. That, it's a weird, it's an interesting way to put it. But I felt it because I was like, man, my friends felt the same way once I kind of got out of this situation. And there's nothing, entertainment's industry, or industry is interesting because it's very intimidating. What I do every night on stage with, you know, girls in the crowd and meet and greets and bars afterwards and parties, and it's super intimidating. Um, and it's not meant for everybody. I totally get it. Um, but it's just all about how you handle those situations. And Sabina and I like completely trust each other. There's no jealousy. There's no, she's an actress. So I have to deal with her kissing dudes and stuff, which sucks, but you know, <laughs> we, we figure it out. Um, and we understand each other and it's just about loving her for her. And, uh, that it's not just leave her wild. It's leave everyone wild. You know, she loves me for me. Yeah. And it's, uh, I just say her cause she's, Cuter and then people you relate. You wrote better. it about her, you know. Of course, <laughs> every day I remind her. Whenever she's mad at something, I wrote you that song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but she uses it against me. She's in this new show uh, called called LA's Finest right now with Jessica Alba and Gabrielle Union. And in the first episode, she's a uh, she always clears this stuff with me like I'm ever gonna say no, whatever. She's a uh, <laughs> this escort that's in this like leather thing with a politician doing this thing. And I know that thing. She's doing this thing and the show. It's not too crazy. It's on TV. But, um, yeah, she'll respond with stuff like, "You leave her wild, you said. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what, what, I, what I, yeah, I wrote a song that she gets to use against me every day. It's cool, though. <laughs> I'm sure the screenwriters love it. Um, do you think that now looking back, you probably needed somebody, a significant other in the entertainment industry? Because you were kind of, it is, it's hard to understand. It's intimidating. It is. It can inspire doubt. There's trust issues, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but for you, you think now, like, you know, she gets it. She's an actress. She gets the, the other side of things. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I tried to date, um, I tried to date a singer in the past. Right. And there was just too much competition. Too there. similar, right? Yeah, yeah. She was judging my songs. Like, you know, I would have done this. I was like, this is not going to work. This is never going to work. You're not allowed to listen to my songs anymore. <laughs> That's how we're breaking this off. Um, yeah, it wasn't until I met Sabina that I just, uh, it all just clicked. And obviously the song has nothing to do with working in the entertainment industry. That's just our specific version of the song. Right, right, right. Um, but yeah, I think it was meeting somebody where there was stuff I had to deal with yeah. and put up with, vice versa, that kind of brought it all together. Uh, your live shows are fantastic. And I wanted to ask you about this mindset I don't know if you'd call it a pre-show ritual, but this this approach to every night's like 80,000 people, how does this go? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so we played a show like three years ago, 9 a.m. firefighters breakfast. That's exactly what it sounds like. Um, <laughs> in the middle of Oregon at this music festival. We were so pumped that we got booked for this festival, and then we ended up playing this 9 a.m. firefighters breakfast at the campgrounds. And we're like, oh, my God, there's people like, 12 people sitting out on lawn chairs, eating French toast. And we're supposed to play like a full-blown, hour-long, full band show. And so we looked at each other and we're like, man, we're lucky to be here. We weren't doing this last summer. We were playing no shows, you know? And so we looked at every reason why we're supposed to be happy to be here. And we was like, I was like, I don't care if there's eight people out there, 80, 800. Today, we're going to play for 80,000. We're going to play like this is a stadium. We're going to play like we do every night. And we went out there, and we played a super fun show. We had the best time. And it led to, ended up with this guy coming up to me afterwards, and I thought he was, like, pissed the whole time. He was, like, shaking his head. And I was like, oh, he hates us so much. And he came up at the end of this meet and greet line with this big flag. And he's like, and I was, <laughs> he walked up, and I was like, he's going to tell me everything that is wrong about me and my music and country music and everything. He's going he's gonna to kill me right now. This is the end. And what he did was he walked up and he said, brother, I would love you to sign this flag. I've come to this festival at this stage, like seven years in a row or something like that, he said. And I've watched every single act. And he says, you guys were by far the best I've ever seen on this stage. You guys came out here and you didn't play like you were playing to people eating breakfast. You played like you were playing to fans that you wanted to make. And uh, thank you for that. And I was like, wow. And I signed this thing and went back and I told the guys the story. And they were all like, that's awesome. And so literally every single show we've ever played, since that moment three, four years ago, 
we break on 80,000. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But we always kind of pull it like The Rock, like Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. We, uh, <laughs> one of us usually looks at each other and we say, how many people we got out here tonight? So we're like, oh, I think it's like, well, like four or five. It doesn't matter how many people we have out here tonight. <laughs> how many people we got tonight? Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and, you know, it's, it's great you have that mindset because I think a lot of artists, you get so busy, life becomes a blur, you forget that every single gig is an opportunity to earn more fans, which yeah. is really cool. Uh, speaking of those fans, let's get to Twitter right now. This comes from at nconway1108. Is Abby and Charlie going to be in you and Sabina Gadecki? Gadecki. Gadecki's yeah. wedding. Um, yes. Um, with obvious roles, Abby will be the flower girl and Charlie will be the ring bearer. Uh, alongside my godchildren and uh, our nieces. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Now, is this a legitimate festival or, you, or is it going to be like a festival? Oh. Your wedding in Nashville. <laughs> I wish it was a festival. Yeah. It's going to be like a festival. It's going to be like, okay, okay. Yeah. I heard a couple different interviews and I was like, wait, is this like a real festival? But no, it's, I'm sure it's going to have that feel probably. Yeah. Our whole vision is, obviously, like I said, we met at a festival. We spend so much time at music festivals and 80% of our wedding that's coming to Nashville to see come to the wedding has never been to Nashville. And oh. they don't really know that side of our lives because they're friends and family. So we want them to really kind of step into this wedding environment that feels what like what our life is yeah with, you know different vendors and just it's just gonna be a party that's awesome uh september september wow yeah it's coming up uh let's get to the first fan question from in studio where's it gonna come from right here what's your name man roberto roberto how what's up man how you doing tyler good good um my question is more about the pro proposal story i read about it online but hearing it from you probably getting that perspective like how did you go about it did you keep it simple was it like a jim and pam thing at a gas station like how did how did we go about it <laughs> jim and pam um shout out to that um it was absolutely crazy um i was going to jamaica and when you're trusting a another country and emails and phone calls to not mess up your proposal on an island is actually extremely terrifying. Um, but what I wanted to do was, she figures everything out. So I had to be really careful with the details. Um, but I pulled it off. What we did is had this lunch over the water. And I'm trying to think of what the, like, the simplest version of this story is. And pretty much I was going to hire this guy to come, this local reggae artist to come and sing our song, Yellow by Coldplay as we're eating this lunch. Um, but if she sees this dude just walking up, she's gonna be like, oh, cool. You wanna just give me the ring now? She's smart, right? <laughs> so I paid for him to walk around the resort and play for hotel guests for an hour around the water. So he looked like he was just kind of walking around playing for tips. <laughs> and I also, because I, you know, I care about my safety, I had to have a photographer and a videographer there because she would kill me if I didn't get documentation. <laughs> So I hired them for an hour as well to walk around following him, handing out fake cards saying, you can come get your photos at the front desk later, um, to the point where he finally got to our little lifted cabana thing. He's like, can I come sing to you guys? And um, he came up and played a song, and they're like, can we play something else? And I was like, oh, do you know any Coldplay? She's like, he does not know Coldplay. Stop. So he's playing this like, super authentic reggae music. <laughs> and he kind of just starts strumming the chord. And, Look at the stars. And she starts bawling. I blacked out. We got engaged. Um, <laughs> but the, the craziest thing is I did not think it was going to work out because I was in the hotel, and I looked out where our cabana was, where all this was going to be going down, and <laughs> nobody was anywhere. And they ended up going and grabbing people from the resort and placing them like extras in a movie around the cabana so he had people to sing to. That's yeah, five-star Yelp review all day, <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get to uh, one final studio audience question. It'll come from over here. What's your name, man? How you doing, man? My name is Ernest. Ernest. Come on, Tyler. Um, question. Um, have you ever thought of doing a collab album? And if you do, would you do it with Brett Young? Oh, cool. A, a whole album or just a song? I'd love a, I'd love a collab song. So Brett is uh, another California native. Yeah. Uh, he, tall. He's super tall. Yeah, we'd have to collab on the height thing for sure. <laughs> Uh, he's like 6'6". Six, six. I could take three of that. Amazing. Meet at, yeah. yeah, I'm 6. He's 6'6". Six, six. Meet at 6'3". Sounds awesome. That's a collab. Um, I would love to. Yeah, he's got an incredible voice. He's an amazing songwriter. Uh, we went on tour during the fall. He brought us to New York. He brought us here. And, yeah, yeah. It was good. It was good. Um, we did that whole CMT tour together. I love, I've got so many collaborations in mind. And uh, if I do a whole lot, I definitely want to do something with Brett. 
I've, I've got some good stuff in, in my in my brain going for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Did you ever reach outside the genre? That's something that we see nowadays. Oh yeah, absolutely. Throw a wild card out there. Um, well, it's not really wild because I feel like everybody wants to do it, but Post Malone, we're gonna do it for sure. I'm calling that out. So that's dude. cool. Um, G Easy. Okay. You know, NorCal. Hip hop, yep. let's go, let's go. Be cool, get a little like Oakland bounce on a song, and then you got yeah, the dude. Like, country twang, E40, G Easy, yeah. let's go. All right, uh, Halsey, that'd be cool. Why yeah, not? all right. Uh, they're telling me we're out of time. time, time. <laughs> I like that we're going out. Uh, where can people keep up to date with you online? Um, everything is just Tyler Rich, uh, it. super spell it T Y L E R R S C H, just like it is right just there. Like that. Yep, as advertised, guys. One more time for Tyler Rich, awesome. Thank you, guys.